What's up folks, this is Justin from Books, Bricks and Boards. As you can tell by my voice, uh, my throat is a little raspy. I've been fighting a little bit of a sinus infection, but I'm not gonna let that keep me from my dungeon. So I'm here today to talk about old school essentials. Uh, I have an interesting uh, history with old, schools, uh, uh, old school essentials. A couple years ago, during the beginning of the pandemic, I was actually in the process of putting together my first RPG group in many years. I hadn't uh, played any RPGs since back before 5th edition was even released. <clears throat> At that time, I was deciding on what kind of a game I wanted to run. And I, of course, at first I looked at 5th edition as my option, but the more I looked at it, the more I saw this kind of a game. I give you Metallicus 8d12 of psychic damage. <laughs> Dude, you're the worst dungeon master. Now that's all well and good, and you can have a lot of fun with that kind of a game. But that's not the role-playing experience that I remembered as a kid, and it wasn't how I wanted my son's first role-playing experience to, uh, to hit with him either. So, <clears throat> in my research, I found several great games. Uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics I discovered during this time period. Um, Advan uh, uh, Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea I found at this time. But the game that I uh, actually started the campaign with was Old School Essentials. Uh, we played the uh, In Search of Adventure module uh, from TSR. And um, we used Old School Essentials and the Old School Essentials Advanced Genre Rules. Um, and it all came from the original little box set. I paid scalper level prices to get one of those after I saw how cool it was and, and how it uh, mimicked the boxed product of the 80s that I so enjoyed. And <clears throat> so uh, I, we had a great time with it. Uh, we played that campaign for about a year uh, before we switched over to uh, Pathfinder 2E. And the only reason we switched was one of my players at the time um, was very big on the, the latest type of system. And he wanted to really play 5th um, edition, so the compromise uh, was to play Pathfinder 2E because it appealed to me more than 5th edition did. But <clears throat> I never lost my love for Old School Essentials. And they've recently uh, did a major reprint, so you can get a lot of this stuff now. It is getting hard to find again. Uh, but because the product line is very broad uh, in nature, I thought it would be worth doing a little bit of a video explaining what Old School Essentials is and also how you should get started in it depending on what type of a game you want to run. So without further ado, let's get into what is Old School Essentials. That, that sound, boom, boom. Boom! <gasps> the Demogorgon! Oh. So there's a lot of videos out there that explain Old School Essentials in much more detail than I'm going to go into because this is primarily going to be a buyer's guide. But I think it is worth a few minutes of my time to kind of explain why you might be interested in it. Old School Essentials is a necrotic gnome, Gavin Norman, uh, redressing of the Old School BX D&D. That's Basic and Expert Set by uh, Moldvay Cook. Um, now, I actually started in basic D&D uh, back in the early 80s, but I played the Minster, uh, which would be back me, uh, basic D&D. Biggest difference between those two that I can find between BX and back me is that in back me, uh, the thieves skill charts were stretched out over more levels so they don't get as powerful as quick, which to me is uh, <clears throat> kind of a flaw with the back me system because these were already pretty underpowered. Um, so, um, this is going to be very similar though. You could use any stuff made for Beck Me very interchangeably. Um, but what Gavin did, everything is very well laid out, and you'll hear that everywhere that you read about Old School Essentials. Everything is done in a style 
where you don't have to flip pages. If you want rules for vehicles and mounts, it's all on a two page spread. If you're looking for rules to be a fighter, it's all on two pages. So you don't have to flip back and forth looking for rules or stats. <clears throat> he did this with the entire system. Everything is exquisitely laid out, very, very organized, easy to find everything. He put wonderful end papers at the beginning and ends of his core tomes. And <clears throat> to give you an idea, of just how great a and complete a system this is. I have two groups that I run uh, RPGs for currently. Uh, my primary group, we play basically just exclusively Pathfinder 2E at this point. Um, and my secondary group, we play a lot of Call of Cthulhu. We've played some ICRPG. We've played some Cypher system. Um, but we, um, we had a short notice game come up and I never turned down a chance to game. So I wanted to run an old school dungeon crawl. I used uh, Axe Bane's uh, dungeon deck to create a, uh, a dungeon and then spent maybe an hour getting the dungeon prepared. And we ran straight out of the rules tone. Uh, no advanced rules, just out of this book. So this $40 book. And we had some of the best time I've had gaming in a long time. Um, it was incredibly deadly. Um, 12, uh, 12 heroes, well, actually four heroes and, and eight retainers uh, walked into the dungeon and two heroes and one retainer walked out. But had a great time. Um, they did beat the big bad and uh, walked away with a magical item uh, for their troubles. But <clears throat> the difference between this and the modern game is going to be miles apart. Um, you're not going to be seeing heroes that come out of the gate as um, Gandalf. You're, they're more gonna be like Samwise level power. Um, combat is very quick and brutal. Uh, you will die if you hit zero hit points with the basic rules anyways. There's some optional rules uh, in advance to, uh, to um, go beyond that, but in, in the basic rules, you hit zero hit points, you're dead. Uh, you got all your classic monsters in here, all your classic tropes. Um, race is class in the base rules. The advanced rules allow to split race and class. And it is going to play just like you remembered it from the 1980s. And if you aren't old enough for the nostalgia to be a factor, then this is gonna play very differently from the other RPGs that you've played. And that should make you curious because it was this kind of game that inspired the growth of the industry that you now uh, seemingly love and enjoy all these other products from. And I think you can learn something from trying this style of play, even if it's just as a one shot. But I'm gonna get into now the different product lines within Old School Essentials and kind of explain um, where to start and what line might be for you depending on what your goal is. Because like I said, Old School Essentials is a very broad product line and it can be rather confusing uh, if you don't know what you're looking for. So we're gonna go ahead and move in to the table and look at the products. Okay, so the first thing you got to decide is whether you want to go box set version or rules tone version. So the classic game is available in both a box set and a rules tone. Rules tone uh, runs about $40 and it has all of the same rules, same layout as what's in these books here in the box set. Um, the box set runs $70. So you may wonder, well, why would I want to spend an extra $30? Well, because it is really, really nice to be able to hand the book across the table to the player when they ask, my halfling just leveled up to level four, what do I get for that? You can hand just this to them. And then you've got a wizard in the party. Well. Uh, I can't remember, I, I didn't bring my sheet that said what sleep did. Well, this book here just has all of the spells in it. 
if you are running the game, this is the core rules. This is the adventures. So this book, this tiny book of like 80 pages, yeah, uh, for, I'm sorry, 48 pages, this has all the rules you need to run the game. Then you've got a separate book for monsters. It's your monster manual, basically. And a separate book for treasures. So by splitting this all up, <clears throat> you could have five different players enjoying the same set of rules, uh, looking at different things at different times to keep the game running smoothly without having multiple copies. Also, if the nostalgia thing is a factor for you, these basic games used to come in box sets, so there is kind of a nod to that in this being a box set. Um, the rules tone is great quality too. Everything that they make is amazing quality. Stitch zone, um, the, the rules tones have the ribbons and like I said, the layout and the art is great. Most of the art is gonna be um, black and white, but there are some color plates uh, that kind of uh, separate some sections. Um, <clears throat> this is the classic game. So this is almost an exact recreation of uh, Moldvay Cook basic expert box sets um, in this one tome. All the monsters, except for the ones that can't be reproduced because of Wizards IP, um, all the characters are exactly the same. Um, there's a few things that they had to change because the original box sets had contradictory um, verbiage. So they even have a document that explains why they chose the way they did whenever they reconciled those, those contradictions. So this would be a logical starting point for anybody that wants to try out the game. There's also a free version called Basic Old School Essentials available from Necrotic Gnomes that you can download. Um, so that would be a way to try it out as well. But either one of these, you're going to be able to play any of the OSR adventures that you want. And you're going to have all your basic characters, uh, fighter, mage, thief, cleric, uh, dwarf, elf, and halfling available to play. And this goes levels 1 through 14. Because let's face it, most great games end long before you hit 14th level anyways. Okay, so if you went the box set route and you decided that you picked, you wanted to pick up the classic game in the box set, there is also an expansion box set that adds the advanced rules. Now these are different than what was available in the Moldvay Cook Basic uh, Expert Boxes. These are reimaginings of the content that was available in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition from the core books in Unearthed Arcana, so it covers the races and classes from the core books and an Arth Arcana, except for the Monk, uh, which Gavin says is going to be released in a later book. And it has the same setup as the other box set in that it separates all the content out over a few books. Now, this advanced set only has four books in it. The basic set, had, or the classic set, had five. Um, this one has the character classes and the races. This one has Druid and Illusionist spells. <clears throat> this is your monster book that has all the monsters from Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, except for the ones that were protected by IP. And this is your treasure book that has new treasures. So between the two of these boxes, you have all the game content for old school essentials. And each one of these is $70. Like I said, they are beautifully bound, very nice books. They're going to last generations. But if you wanted to go a different route, all of the same material that's in those two boxes can also be found in these two tomes. This is the Advanced Fantasy Referees Tome and the Advanced Fantasies Player Tome. So <clears throat> for myself, I can easily parse what is advanced and what was Basic Expert because I spent so much time playing Basic Expert. For somebody that's new to the system, it may be hard for them to figure out 
what are advanced uh, class options um, and rule options versus what are the basic options. A lot of the advanced options in here are listed as optional. Uh, that's one way you can tell. Um, but for the classes, you'd have to do a little bit of research. But if you remember that the, the classic fantasy, the basic expert set only had seven classes, fighter mage, thief, cleric, and dwarf, elf, halfling, anything else that you find is going to obviously be advanced material. The only reason I bring that up is some folks might want to play a classic game that does not add any of the extras that Gavin has lovingly created in the styling of BX, but that wasn't true to the original BX. I think he's done a wonderful job balancing them, and I think he's really captured the flavor and the essence of those AD&D concepts and put it into a system that is just much more manageable than Advanced Dungeons & Dragons actually was. So, <clears throat> you buy these two books, you have everything that is in those two box sets that I just showed you. So, these two books get you all of the content from both the classic and the advanced uh, sets for Old School Essentials. You have enough content to play for decades right here in front of you. These run uh, about $35 a piece, $40 a piece. And again, you got ribbons, you got uh, Smithsonian bindings, you got great artwork, the same layout where you don't have to flip pages and constantly search. All the rules are where you think they should be, and they are laid out in such a way that you don't have to flip back and forth look looking for pieces of them. So this would be another route you could go if you decide not to do the box sets. All right, so let's say you've made your choice. You went either box set or rules tome, or like me, you just got it all, and you're looking for other things to enhance your game. Uh, Necrotic Gnome created this great uh, DM screen, or referee screen. They call them referees in uh, old school essentials, which was a common term used by gamers in the late 70s and early 80s. And it has all of the tables that you're gonna need, and they're laid out very nicely, as you would expect from a Necrotic Gnome game. And you got this great artwork. So I would highly suggest picking this up. This is also something that didn't properly exist when the Moldve Cook game was out. You didn't have a BX screen available. So this is something that Gavin put together himself from scratch. Another item that I would highly suggest that you pick up <clears throat> would be the Advanced Fantasy Reference Booklet. This is going to have the tables from within the book, and it's going to make character creation a breeze. It's also going to make grabbing the book and flipping through a 250-page tome a lot less necessary. This runs about 14 bucks. Another tool that you can use in your game would be the Carcass Crawler. Uh, currently there are two issues out, plus there is a Kickstarter issue uh, that you can no longer get. Um, these have different rules that you can optionally use in your game, uh, extra classes. There are, in these two, for example, there are rules for classes that are effectively Jedi and Vulcans. Um, giants. Uh, there's different ways to run thief skills because, as I said earlier, <laughs> thieves were definitely getting the short end of the stick in BX. And there's rules for black powder weapons. Uh, in the second uh, issue, there were a couple different types of elves, uh, some different tables for um, what things would cost to do in town and a little bit of a dungeon and some sci-fi weaponry that you can add to your campaign. I saved the best for last, kind of. Um, so these are all adventure modules that are available officially through Necrotic Gnome. Uh, some of these were written by Gavin. Some of these were written uh, by other uh, OSR writers. One of my favorite writers is in here, uh, Diogo Noguera, who is the author of 
sharp swords and sinister spells. And these all have <clears throat> the same advantage that all old school essentials products do in that they are incredibly well laid out and the, the stat blocks are very succinct and the way that they explain the rooms of dungeons or the areas in different uh, modules is just very beautifully done. The artwork is great. The stories are interesting and they've got enough of a twist to them that they won't feel like anything that your players have ever ran before. And I think they are well worth picking up. Of course, they are these beautiful hardback books and they are something that is going to stay in great condition on your shelf for years and years to come. And just as a bonus, there are also some third-party uh, items that you can pick up that are made to work with Old School Essentials. This one here in particular is very widely available, and it's called Old School Stylish. And it allows you to give your heroes some uh, very cool perks, um, some different things that they can do that make them special. And this was a common thing in the 80s for Dungeon Masters to do because there weren't a lot of rules to make characters stand out and feel special. So a lot of times the quests were to allow players to gain some house-ruled special abilities. So what this does is it gives you some ideas for how to run a drunken master fighting uh, uh, martial artist uh, or various different um, styles. Um, so with this book, it gives you some suggestions on how the players might come across their new styles and gives you extensive rules on how to run them. But there are many third-party party publishers that are putting stuff out for old school essentials this is going to be a system that is around for a very long time. Um, Gavin Norman has already responded to the OGL nonsense, and he has told us that this is here to stay. Uh, one way or another, Old School Essentials is going to remain in print, and we're going to have access to this awesome game that he's created, and we're going to be able to play the type of D&D that we want to play, not what our corporate overlords tell us we need to be playing. So... If you enjoyed the content, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I appreciate you all. And this has been Justin from Books, Bricks, and Boards. Good gaming, and God bless.